Hello everyone, David Vos here. And boy, is it beautiful here in paradise. I just talked to the neighbor, I think yesterday. Because I had ne never been here through a winter. And I was thinking, man, I thought it was still going to start getting cold. But it's like summer here. It's beautiful. The fall leaves, but it's warm. It's colder at night. Can get down to freezing already. But it's at night because we're at 8,000 feet. During the day, it's beautiful. And I asked the neighbor, I says, are we going to get some snow? Is it going to start getting cold pretty quick? And he said, no, 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 no. This will stay this way all the way up till January 1st. Which is the beginning of winter, actually. Which I always get that confused. Even though I know that's winter. But I always feel like winter starts in November or something. Because I'm from Idaho, I suppose. Shooting some places in southern Idaho and Wyoming. Winter starts in September or, or around deer season. But not here. We're still having summer kind of like. Beautiful. Beautiful weather. But he does tell me that we get quite a bit of snow after January. Maybe for a week or two or three at the most. And then it all warms up again. Well, I hope you're having a wonderful day where you are, friends. I'm having a time of my life. I'm just beholding nature and life and the puppies playing. And the Holy Spirit is flowing like a river. And I'm dipping my toes in that beautiful river. And I am so happy to hear these truths the Lord has and I am amazed that we have not really understood all of this I mean one of the things that I want to read to you right now I want to talk to you about is this dragon and we did a little bit about that yesterday and we talked a little bit about it the day before we're getting really deep I don't know if many of you appreciate what we're studying here some of you may think, man, you're getting off in the weeds now, Dave. Friends, we're not getting off in the weeds. We're finding out the truth. We found out the Old Testament isn't all about Yahweh. Half of it's about Jesus and half of it's about Yahweh. And we've showed how that is. There's always two creation stories, two Noah stories, flood stories, two covenants with Abraham, two mountains uh, that Moses goes up. The new covenant, the old covenant, it's all in there from the beginning. The Lord has never left us without a witness. And friends, be careful. Some of the things that we're showing you today is fantastic. And it's so astounding to find out that some of the things that we've been taught were designed to hide the truth. That we were lied to beyond anything we could imagine. Now, there are those who go around saying, oh, well, we worship the devil, not deity. We're Satan worshipers, right? Jesus is terrible. He's a bad guy. We don't do that here. And that's not what this is about at all. You see, the lie is pernicious. And they have twisted everything upside down and backwards, but they can't turn everything upside down and backwards. I mean, like, you're going to live in the real world. You're here. You are real. They can't touch you. They can't take your mind. The Mandela effect cannot be possible. They cannot change your memories. So, all of these little examples about the monocle on the Monopoly man the banker guy and it used to have one now it don't there's a couple of explanations one there were versions of the game that were made that did have the monocle but it were made by a different company and they had to i don't know some some legal reasons why they there was a set or the or some of the earliest monopoly boards may have had it and we have some of us may have had those boards but somebody will say yeah but monopoly says it's never been that way well, maybe they don't know. Maybe the present guy that's running the whole show never knew what the original Monopoly game looked like. There's lots of explanations. Some of which it could just be that you saw pictures of it. Like there was even a movie, I guess Jim Carrey played in, where he goes up to a guy with a monocle 
around his neck. Now, it wasn't around his eye. It was down hanging on his necklace. But he was a banker or something. And Jim Carrey got up in his face and said, uh, don't pass go or don't collect $200 or something like that. Well, that's not proof. And I'm not here to talk about the Mandela effect, but I'm just making this a example because there are things that we can think is true, but we don't have absolute proof for it. And we don't want to believe in things that are just happenstance anyway. Certain facts or non-facts does not make us genius. Even Jesus did not know everything. He did not know the day and the hour. Well, if he was almighty and powerful and divine, how could he how could anything be hidden from him? Because it doesn't work like that. We choose to live in a certain consciousness, whoever we are. The universe itself is all the consciousnesses, and we can never live in all of them unless we've lost the entire ego. So as long as you are an entity born into this world, born of a woman, you're going to have any or some kind of a veil over your mind. You, you, uh, the, the Lord Jesus prayed unto his father and his divine mother. He conceived of himself as the son of them, not as the one, even though he did know intellectually and through faith that he was one with the father. There are things that we can know in the knowing, in that spiritual vision. But consciously explaining it or putting it into words is not always correct, is not always possible. Because if a prophet was really a prophet and he heard and communed with the Father and the Divine Mother, then that prophet being a man would only be able to retain a fraction of what he saw and heard. He wouldn't even understood all of it. This is why Moses couldn't see the divine being's presence or his face. Only the backside because only the darkness, only the unknown, only the ignorance can we know. And whatever it is that we say we know, we don't yet know it as we ought to know it, the Apostle Paul says. So, Knowledge is something that's ever increasing. It simply means to learn, to know for yourself. Experiment. And the word experiment or experience is gnosis in the Greek. And it in its in, in its own definition means you don't know everything. Because it means you're learning. It means you're knowing and by experience. So you're going through the process of knowing. There are a lot of words that we don't have today. We have this English language and it doesn't match with the Bible. We're going to show you one of those words here today. It's the word RK. We're going to go to the book of Revelation and talk about the dragon again. And you'll notice that the dragon is the original serpent or the ancient serpent. Some call it the old serpent. And that's not a correct translation. It's, it's fine, but it's not the exact translation. The word is arche or archon. And if you'll remember, the early Christians taught about the archons. And they weren't the good guys. But they're not necessarily the bad guys. They're the present order. And they came first, the ark. And the ark is a bent kind of ark. We get the word arch, right? You have a uh, Mexican adobe style house a lot of times they'll have arches under the pillars or the ancient greeks would have these arches and this arch is also the word ark and it means the beginning of the chief or the first but it's more than just the first if we were to use english we might say the chief or the first so it was not the original dragon or the original serpent, as if there was only one, right? That's not the correct translation. It's the first. There is more than one. And these archons are the rulers. 
And each one rules in succession. And there are seven heads and ten horns, and this is astrology. And that dragon is not the original serpent. The original serpent was Jesus, who gave them wisdom. Right? How could this dragon, being uh, in heaven, he's after the woman, Eve? No, the other dragon was helping the woman, saying, partake, have knowledge, become like the divine one. Hey, I'll give you the tree of life too. And, and, and living waters bubbling up from your innermost being. Ye are the divine one. The scripture cannot be broken. I would have given, woman, I would have given you eternal living waters if you just asked me. I am the one in the garden who gave you the wisdom. You must be like a serpent who is wise, Jesus said. And by that, Jesus declared the serpent to be good and his message to Eve to be wise. And he counseled us to be like him, to teach wisdom, to be brave, to be honest, to be truthful, because it is a truth that leads to eternal life. And it's also gnosis which is the experience that leads to the truth, which leads to the attainment of the divine, which is that word dios or day or theater or, or consciousness, higher consciousness, not the light of the sun. It only represents that. So we've got two, the first serpent and the second serpent. Well, the first serpent didn't lie. He was wise, the wisest of all the creatures the deity had made. The, the wisest of all. He had wings. He was the seraphim. Seraph means serpent. And he had six wings. And there were two. Now, somebody will say, well, wait a minute now. You said yesterday that there were two of these serpents. Okay, we got that. And you said that one of them was thrown out of heaven. And that one was Jesus. Well, that doesn't make sense. We thought that was the devil. Well, they both get thrown out of heaven. But who gets thrown out first? Well, I'll tell you who. The Bible tells you the story. It's called the story of Cain and Abel. Okay, the firstborn is really Abel. Remember, Judah had two sons, Zerah and Perez. Well, Zerah came out first and they tied a little red ribbon around it. And then he pulled his arm back in and boop, out pops Perez. Through whom the other line of Judah, reigning over there in that little place south of Lebanon today, still thinks they're the ruler. But in fact, Jacob, all of his sons could not attain unto the promise without marrying the Canaanite daughter because it's going to be a family affair, my friends. And that's why our Heavenly Father did not murder or punish Cain by throwing him into hell forever and ever, but simply said there would be a mark upon him. And at the end of seven times, his sin would be finished. But of course, at that point, his son Lamech did it again, and then it was 70 times 7, and this is representing that the curse that was there on that Cain was, in all of his descendants, is all of us in the flesh, and it will not be lifted until the end of the 7 times 70, which is the Jubilee, which, that means the millennial, when everyone is set free. But Cain shall be restored. The flesh must be restored. You can't live without your brother. Okay, your brother made a mistake. What are you going to do? That's it. He's done. He'd just been alive for a few minutes. And what is this story anyway? Do we need a story right off the bat? Genesis chapter 1, the creation and, you know, Adam and Eve and they get thrown out of the garden and they have two kids and one of them kills each other. What? What is this talking? It's got to be deeper than that. Now, Cain is the devil. Adam is the form of the divine being and Eve is the form of the divine mother. And they're, they're the, that's the body, the tabernacle of the divine. And deity was in us, reconciling the world unto himself, just as he was in Christ. And that's why Christ had the divine being within him. Because they breathed into Adam the breath of lives, plural. And Adam became an immortal soul, a living soul. Living means 
You're not dying. Didn't say a temporary soul. He became a living soul. All the animals are immortal. They're all immortal souls. But they're advancing and progressing from the fish, the mammals, or the birds, the mammals, the men. And that's what this astrology is, these animals. They're vehicles, they're personalities, they're avatars that we dwell in, that the divine being dwells in from the top down. And so the children came from Adam and Eve. And this is the divine father and the divine mother, Atum and Ra. Ra is the spiritual counterpart of the divine father. And Atum was the avatar that he dwelled in. And so, Cain killed his brother Abel. Well, Cain's the side of the flesh. He's the one who made the big mistake. But, you see, this is a parable because Cain is the physical. The physical or the conscious mind cannot make decisions without learning and progression. Just like Eve initiated us into eating from the tree, the knowledge of good and evil. Well, you see, now that there had become good and evil from eating of the tree, and what happened after eating that tree that was in the middle of the garden? The garden is your body, the creation, and in the middle is the sexual organ. So the serpent seduced our mother. And through disobedience, through becoming separated, the Adam and the Eve. Because even though the conscious mind should be one with the higher will, it has to grow to that understanding. It has to attain wisdom. And the woman represents that lower consciousness that goes through the initiation of knowledge. So it's going to question. It's going to learn. It's going to taste the bitter in order to understand the sweet. Well, some people have said maybe the fruit in the middle of the garden is the sexual organ and the great unforgivable sin or the original sin was sex. Well, there's a lot of things in the verse that lends credence to that. The sexual organs are in the middle of the garden, which is your body, which represents as above, so below, the whole universe. And in the center, you've got the basic urge. And that's where the woman's vagina is. And that's where we're all born from. So that's the center of this entire creation. Remember, there's two creations. But right now we're dealing with the true Adam and Eve Yahweh's taking this true Adam and Eve and splitting their consciousness. So it's the same, the real Adam and Eve. But now we've split them and they're not one. And they're in rebellion or they're in the darkness about each other. And there is a now going to be put a veil over the woman, which is the law. That's what made the veil. That's what made the woman ignorant. When she was simply hand in hand with her husband, they were in paradise but when Yahweh the lower ego developed the actual liar not the serpent is not the liar the serpent was the wisest let's read the the, the verses without subjectiveness without the control of the Vatican or the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses right or these false apostles of the Mormons today Jesus told the Judeans who was the liar. The original serpent wasn't the one who told the truth, who was the wise one, but the first serpent, because there were two. Just as the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Akkadians, the Egyptians, and all the others have, have said, look up in the sky, get Polaris, there's a big dipper, the little dipper. One on the west side, one on the east side. And these are the two seraphim, and they have six wings each, which is 12 houses, and they say, holy, holy, holy. And they were both there. Well, Ra is the sun in the center. And around this grandiose sun of light, which is the conscious, higher consciousness of light, the being, the will, around it are these 
two sides that it's split into, which is Cain and Abel. And we got to decide who's the liar and who's the who's the good guy. Well, nobody's good, nobody's bad. We simply got two children and we can't live without either one of them because they're our children. One of them makes a mistake. We have to atone for it. We have to discipline them because our Heavenly Father disciplines those whom He loves. And we're not even talking about two children. We're talking about two natures. And each of these kids are going to represent these two different natures. We're going to love them both, though. The Bible probably used the parable of children so that we would understand. That's why our Heavenly Father didn't murder Cain or condemn him to eternal hellfire, right? These two represent the lower consciousness. The I am Yahweh. That is my name. I am vengeance. I am jealous. I will not pardon your sins. The deity of vengeance. Hate. And the other I am. I am the truth, the way, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. Well, how is it there could be these two? Well, remember, we're talking about building a creation now. In the Divine Mother and Father, there's no darkness. There's only light. But, if you're going to cut them in half and make a child, we're, we're talking about concepts. We're, we're creating the image, the imagining. And the good son who inherits the kingdom, the chosen one, is the one that is right. And you know what that means? The one that is real. The actual child. Because they only have one child. And all other children... Or is that one child. And if you've done it unto me, you've done it unto them. I and the Father are one. And you are one with me as I am one with the Father. And we're all one in Christ. And we're the only begotten. There's no more. There's only one. So who's this other kid? Well, that's the one the Lord has hated. Who is that? The one that doesn't exist. The concept that we've rejected. That we didn't create. But it's that concept that is the dark side that is still learning now as far as children if one of them is going to represent the dark side it just means he's yet ignorant remember in the deck of cards you've got the fool we call him the joker see how these words just keep getting changed originally the word fool meant somebody ignorant he's not an evil guy with a big smile like he's doing it deviously you know a lot of Ignorant things have gotten into our understanding of the esoteric wisdom. And modern cards are just not very good copies of the original truth. Because the original word was a fool, and the fool doesn't mean evil. And he didn't have that devious smile like they do today. He was dressed up like a clown, trying, he was the jester. He was trying to appease the king because he wanted to win he didn't understand he was entertaining and you see these people in this elite family today they're all jesters they're all dancing and tap dancing and singing a song and telling the jokes and what they're really trying to do is mesmerize the king and deceive us all but are they evil no they're very foolish ignorant and they represent the side that is the fleshly side which has law and order and who thinks in the sense of I'm jealous I'm going to be the one reigning maybe Cain thought he was doing the world a favor by getting rid of this evil son of his brother and, and, and making sure he secured the throne for generations of, of children to come who knows but it's based on ignorance that anybody does anything wrong and every child even if they're ignorant, meaning they're just a baby, that child will be loved of the father. The prodigal son, even though he squandered everything and left, according to the parable that Jesus gave, no matter who that, who was he, who is he talking about? Who's this prodigal son? Well, all of us are born in sin. We're all deceived by the devil. We all got the mark of the beast on this earth because you can't buy or sell without it. Last time I looked, everybody's buying and selling. 
And nobody's saying a word about the innocent Palestinians and murdering millions and millions of people on the altar of this evil ignorance that swept the world. But none of us are courageous and strong enough. And that's what it means to be righteous. A righteous one will always be there as a protector. But Cain was the proverbial bad guy. There's only two kids. Jacob and Esau. And Esau have hated. And then we found out yesterday that Esau got uh, a bunch of descendants and they ended up making Rome and combining Ishmael's blessing with them and Keturah's blessing and then getting the higher priesthood from Jethro and running it down through the line of Zerah from Judah and having the Melchizedek priest on their side. Yeah, Jacob stole the blessing. But he was listening to Yahweh. But finally, Jacob defeats Yahweh in that wrestling match. And at the break of dawn, when the sun began to rise, he saw Rachel, or the rays of El, come over the hill. And he rolled the stone from off the well and took of the deep eternal waters. And that was just beyond the place called Pineal the pineal gland, and he awakened and saw a deity. And they called him Israel. Because even that which is in this degraded world that we live in, the carnal, earthly world, it will be exalted. And Jesus raised that body up that was dying and cursed upon that cross. He raised it up in three days into immortality and it had wings. So Cain was a child of the Lord, but Cain was really the second born who wasn't capable of understanding his brother and the higher consciousness. And so because of his zeal and his foolishness and his ignorance and his stupidity, because he was blind and he said, I am and there is none else, he murdered his brother. And so it was Satan that threw Jesus out of heaven because That story is told in Isaiah 14. Yahweh is jealous. Remember how he says, my name is jealous? Well, anywhere you see somebody jealous, you know that's the devil. That's not our heavenly father. He's not jealous. Jesus said, I don't call you my slaves or my servants. I call you my friends. I've told you all things that I've done. A slave doesn't know all the things that his master is doing, but I've told you all things. I don't call you my slaves. But Yahweh says, oh, Jacob, you worm. You are my servant. You are my slave. I delight in crushing you. I delight in Isaiah 53 in crushing Jesus and sending him to hell. Yeah, it was Yahweh that sent Jesus to hell. It was Cain that sent Abel to hell and his blood cried out from the ground. What about Revelation chapter 12 where it says that the dragon was in heaven? Yeah. Well, who's the dragon? Oh, the original serpent. No, that was Jesus. This is the first serpent. There were two of them. And we just found out which one it is because Jesus said, your father's the devil and he's a liar and a murderer. But Jesus said the the, the serpent was wise. Do like the serpent. Be wise. Jesus did talk about some kind of serpents. He talked about vipers. There are two different serpents, right? One is a viper. And the brood of vipers were the Judeans. And he said, your father is the devil. That means they're the children of the, of the viper. And Jesus said it right there for all those who have ears to hear. Jesus called Yahweh a viper. And his children the brood of vipers. And so the first serpent was the archon. The Demir, Yahweh. Yeah, he ruled first. He was Cain. He threw his brother to hell. Lucifer. The light. The light side was thrown down. Lucifer means light, friends. Wake up. Yahweh threw Lucifer down. Lucifer is the Lord and Savior. The bright and morning star. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. The Almighty. And so, Jesus went to hell. How did he get out? Well, he conquered Yahweh. 
He wrestled. Jacob wrestled Yahweh and he won. <laughs> and he raised when the sun raised because he got married to Mary Magdalene. They made a union, the spirit and the flesh. And so Jesus came out of hell. And Michael and his angels battled with the dragon and his angels. It means they both had angels. Wait a minute, the dragon's got angels? So the opposite of the dragon is Jesus. Yeah, because Jesus is not the archon or the first of the rulers. Because there cometh night and then the morning. There will be an evening and a morning every day. There's an evening and then a morning. And so the darkness reigns first and then comes the light. So Satan was in heaven. Why did, yeah, all these people, how did the devil get in heaven? Because he always been ruling this world for since he killed Abel. And all the blood since from right, righteous Abel all the way down to Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, who was murdered in the altar in the temple, shall be upon you. And your father is the devil, a liar. And you are the children of that viper, that serpent. The Archon, the first, the chief who ruled the first age, the Archon who ruled the first Ark of the Sphere. So when Jesus came out, Michael and his angels, yeah, the one who was like L, Mike L, battled with the dragon, the first, he was in heaven. Michael went up to heaven and overthrew Satan and threw him down. And that battle is ensuing right now. And when Satan is thrown down to the earth, he has but a short time. Woe for the earth and for the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. That he might deceive the entire world. And now, my friends, this scripture is being fulfilled before your very eyes. Because you indeed have been deceived into worshiping this being called Yahweh, who is truly the devil. And you defiled your sanctuary with this thing called shame and demanded a covering, an atonement by murdering the, the poor little animals, the immortal beings, and twisting and cursing them. And he cursed that serpent, which was Jesus. And cursed is everybody that is hanged upon a tree. And that's how he cursed Jesus. And that's how he cursed me and you and everybody else by means of the law. And death cometh by means of law. But we're not under the law. We're not under Yahweh. As soon as your conscious mind in this world that is giving its allegiance to the lie submits to the truth and receives and lets it in, you'll immediately be in communion with the Most High and the Divine Mother and you will have overthrown the devil like a lightning. So let me read you that chapter in Revelation 12 because I know we've had some questions. Some of you probably had some questions and I've been trying to answer this slowly because we've got to have line upon line. We've got to build our understanding before we can just say something that people will just reject out of hand because you've been deceived so deep. It's taken us all this time. I told you I was going to tell you about the Vestal Virgins. We finally got around to, to explaining it, but it took a lot of work to have it. Like we had to make stepping stones to get there. Well, now we're about to really explain this dragon and how about the harlot that rides the beast? Because I always thought, well, wait, wait a minute now. Who is the beast? Is that the same as the dragon? They both got seven heads. They both got ten horns. Well, the dragon's in heaven. The beast is on the earth or in the sea, I should say. And then on the earth is this lamb that looks like a dragon. Hmm. So if he looks like a dragon, but he's really a lamb, then <laughs> the dragon's the bad guy and he's after the woman. To take the child. So the dragon's in heaven. The dragon's in charge. The dragon's the archon. And we don't need to listen to the archon. Or the ruler of this world. Because he's been thrown out by Jesus. And Jesus told you that. He says, the ruler of this world's been thrown out. Who's the ruler of this world? If it ain't Jesus. Well it is now. He threw him out. But before it was Jesus. It was Yahweh. And Yahweh offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. 
No one had the ability to offer that. Because Yahweh said, I set kings up and I bring them down. And nobody reigns except by my word. I am Yahweh and there is none else. And you will obey me or you'll die. I am the only deity. There is none else. I am the only savior. And this Jesus, who thinks he's like the most high, who tries to say he's going to raise his throne above the stars of deity, of El, well, I'm going to cast him down like a worm. Remember what it says in Isaiah 53? Oh, you worm, Jacob. I'm going to, I'm going to bruise you and, and curse you and crush you. And I'm going to enjoy it. So let's take a little look at Revelation chapter 12. Because we have to understand how this serpent could be Jesus. And yet the original serpent is not Jesus. We also have to understand why if the beast and the dragon and the false prophet are destroyed by Jesus. We know he can't be any of that. They're pretending to be Jesus. They look like a lamb, but they speak like a dragon. We know they're the bad guys. Well, that's the archon. They were up there first. They ruled first. Then Jesus came up out of hell and he, and he goes with all of his angels and they defeat Yahweh and they throw him down. What did Jesus defeat? He defeated the law. He defeated sin. He freed you. So we've got to understand then why this evil beast that comes out of the abyss, you know, like Tiamat, which is time and mat matter. That's the present physical universe. She's a woman and she's not evil. She's a dragon. There were more than one dragon because mama dragon had some couple of baby dragons. And if you've ever heard the story or read the story in Genesis of Eve, and you've ever seen pictures of this story, it shows Eve with the serpent around her neck like she was best buddies with the serpent. Right? And the serpent's talking to her. Why is it her serpent talking to her? Because you see, the serpent is whispering the wisdom from the carnal, physical existence. And that woman is the lower consciousness that's hearing the instinctual nature, the wisdom from mother nature, from the from the feminine. So the serpent is more feminine. Tiamat was a woman. And Cain is more masculine. This is why the Judeans like the patriarch. But even the rabbis will tell you that in order to be a true child of Israel, you must have a lineal descent from your mother. It doesn't really matter whether you've got an actual lineal descendant on your father's side. Because the real lineal descent only mattered if you came from the woman, which was a Canaanite woman. Tamar, Rahab the harlot, Naaba, the concubine of Noah, and so on. But if the beast, which mirrors the dragon, there's seven heads and ten horns on the beast too, but he's called the beast, and he's got parts of a lion. This is an animal that might be on land, but he's in the sea. Well, that's the um, Capricorn. Capricorn is the beast that swallows up the Jonah, because Jonah's on his way to Nineveh to say, you're all going to be condemned if you don't repent, and they all repent. But the beast takes Jonah there. We've all got to go through the experience of death down through the waters. January, Jonas, John, or Anu. He's going to baptize us, the Aquarian man. And we go down through the water three days, January, February, March. We arise on the spring equinox and Horus is born on the horizon and the day begins. And now Set's brother, because Set is the setting of the sun, Set is defeated by Horus and Horus rises. 
Jesus rises and Orion comes up in the spring. Orion is Osiris, the father of Horus. And Isis is there, right behind Orion. They're the first star that you see to count the beginning of spring. And they come up out of hell and Orion's got a bow and he shoots the bull's eye of Taurus. Why? Because Taurus, the bull, the beast, is carrying a precious cargo. The mother, Alcyone, and her seven brides, the Pleiades. And they're freed because the woman, the harlot, the Canaanite woman, the holy woman, that's what the word harlot means. Look it up in Hebrew. It means holy. The same exact word that is used where it says the holy temple or the holy uh, ark of the covenant or the holy priest or the holy deity. Holy, sacred, good. That's what a harlot was. A harlot's not the same as a prostitute. And Mary Magdalene was not a prostitute. She was a holy priestess. The Divine Mother. And she's riding the beast not because she's part of it. It has nothing to do with... She's really... You know, you've got this virgin mother. Well, there was also the widow. We've got to raise up the widow's son because this virgin is not necessarily without child. Okay, she had a virgin birth. And she is married. She gets married. And the father dies. And she becomes a widow. And so on earth, we don't have the truth anymore. The woman, all of us, were a widow. Because Satan or Set tried to kill Osiris. So now it's up to the mother. And Isis has to raise Osiris back from the dead. And so she takes his phallus and she is able to impregnate herself and she has a child and the divine father is raised up in the child and this is a story about the universe and creation and fertility. And Jesus is that child who will now take his throne and reign and with his angels throw Yahweh out, the archon, the not the original serpent, but the first the one who reigned first, the chief, who reigns in the sky, in the heavens. And now Jesus will ascend and reign over the mountain of El and throw Satan out. And that's about to happen shortly. So let me just read to you the 12th chapter of Revelation and see if now you understand what this is all about. So it says, the woman and the dragon. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. We know she's a good woman, right? Because she's got the sun, the sun of righteousness or truth. And the moon under her feet, she's conquered the law. She's free. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. So she's crowned. We know that. And a crown means more than you can imagine. It's a corona. And so therefore it's at the top of your head. It's the, there's little flames on the top of a crown. If you've ever seen one. And that means that it's the crown chakra that has been ignited. And that's what gives you immortality. And that's your crown. It's your everlasting exaltation. But she's crowned with 12 stars. Because each of these tips have a, specific stone there is a crown like this today that the queen of england or i should say now the king of a britain the british or the covenant people who sits on a throne under which that throne sits the stone of scone which is the stone of jacob a friend of mine sent me a little clip where this woman was talking about this we've talked about this before too but the throne that King Charles sits on is on a five-step pyramid. And this truly is, they claim in their genealogies that 
King Charles is descended of Abraham and they claim, and I've said this before myself in other videos, if you go back, but Abraham was the first Pharaoh of the, I think the 19th dynasty. And so King Charles has these, the whip, the staff and all the memorabilia that, that the Pharaoh has had. And that's why there is a pyramid on a dollar bill. This is the only line through whom the Messiah shall come. The problem is Messiah already came and he rejected him. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. The chief cornerstone is always on a pyramid. And this, again, takes us back to the Egyptian dynasty of the pharaohs or the Pharaoh or the house of Ra, which is the house of Adam, Atum. And, of course, Adam was of the first dynasty of the pharaohs in their genealogy. And there were nine deities from Atum down to at the end of the destruction of Atlantis. And those are the Enneads that they speak of. And those are the patriarchs. And we call them patriarchs. But they call them our Kongs. And they are the rulers. But their rulers begin with Cain, the first or the chief, the Archon, and ends with Molech, Lamech, or the Canaanite priest, who must be reconciled by the wedding to the children of Seth. So this great ceremony where they anoint their king and establish their kingdom is all about the worship of power and greed. And they are of the devil who entered in and infiltrated the truth. But the one who really reigns in heaven now was Jesus Christ. And so having rejected him, they think they are the king and they continue on with these ceremonies and rituals that are so ridiculous. They have no idea that Jesus threw Satan out and now Satan is their deity. And they've made a covenant with him. And so it reads, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. So we know this is the good woman. This is Eve. Eve's the one that would, Genesis 3.15, the very first prophecy in our Bible says that she will bring forth the seed to deliver us. And here's the seed. Well, it's Jesus and we're all in Jesus. And this is the final uh, birth of the kingdom. Who has heard of such a thing that a child would be born in one day and the kingdom will be born in one day and it's coming very soon because Satan is about to be thrown out. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, another wonder. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Well, now, the woman's in heaven. Eve's in heaven. Well, remember, this is before she had the child. The period of childbirth happens after this, this long nine months of pain. Travail. The travail is the time that we're in the world in this maze and all this suffering we go down into egypt a woman with child who just barely gives birth and the child and this woman go down and and they're being persecuted by the devil so it, you can't get too hung up on exactly when the child was born the child began to be born christ was crucified from the founding of the world we're all being crucified daily but the child is the Christ child and we're all one in Christ. It's the man child that will rule all nations with a rod of iron. The child's caught up to deity and to his throne. When? Well, all throughout time, when people attain, they go. When they overcome this world. But this is specifically speaking of this moment when in the great time of trouble, Satan's thrown down and he murders the whole world and they all go to heaven around his throne and are given white robes. We're talking about the beginning of the Great Tribulation here. And his tail threw the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. So when Jesus goes up there and throws the devil out, he takes with him 
all these archons and you know the demiurge and all the archons and all of the fallen children of Cain or the flesh and takes the rule of the carnal uh, ignorance and sends it down to the earth and it goes into some kind of insanity and in its wrath it has its orgy of wrath sort of a death spasm there's nothing left for him to lose he's going to become unhinged and he's come to deceive the entire inhabited world and so the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared by deity. They should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And that's the great tribulation. So there is war in heaven. Michael, that is the leader of the armies of Jesus. There's no certainty as to whether Michael means Jesus. It may though, because it means the one who would like deity. And his angels, it's very very possible that Michael is the archon that's now going to succeed the other archon. So the first of the serpents was the dragon. Now we've got Michael, the archon, who defeats and his angels or his administration that are going to throw out the devil in his administration. We're no longer be under law or under this carnal nature, but we're going to be in a beautiful spiritual paradise that we're going to restore the world and his angels were cast out with him well that means all the demons are going to be on the earth trying to possess souls and deceive us all and it says now has come the salvation the strength and the kingdom of our deity and the power of christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down and he accused them before our deity day and night well what is going on here day and night from the very beginning, when Cain killed Abel, Yahweh's been in charge. And they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. Because he knoweth he hath but a short time. Oh, buddy, friends, that ain't going to be good. But of course, he has nothing in us. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning, but he has nothing in me and he has nothing in you because he has given us the authority to trample upon scorpions and serpents. We have passed over from death to life and there is no condemnation that are, those that are in Christ. And we're not appointed under the wrath because the wrath is the wrath of Yahweh, the wrath of deity. For all those who have broken his law, who are under his covenant, which means this physical world. If you are giving your allegiance to the world, if you haven't gotten out of the world, if you didn't find the secret door, you must knock and it will be opened. You must seek for it and you will find it. You must ask for it. Pray for it. Do you pray? Well, then that's probably, if you haven't prayed, that's probably why you don't have it. And it is something you just simply receive. He's given it, but you've got to seek for it. And when you find it, it's like a pearl of great price. It's very precious. Don't give it to the swine. They'll trample that pearl beneath their feet. They care nothing for this beautiful, precious pearl of truth. For eternal life. For goodness. For happiness. Because they're nothing but swine. But guess what? Even the swine have souls and the Lord loves them. But their nature is a, in a cursed state because they're under the law. And that nature, the nature of the swine, is where the demons will go when he, he forces them out of the little children that are down in the caves that are being brutally abused. But when Jesus freed the man who was bound by the law of Moses, chains around his body, chained to a post, he was crazy. He had wrath and anger and vengeance and he wanted to kill everybody because he was 
under the bondage of the law. And Jesus had mercy on us. And there were a legion of demons. All the demons were in us. And he threw them out. And they said, Lord, can we go into the swine? Why? Because the swine is a very low nature. And that's the lowest, filthiest nature among the animals. And so Jesus let these demons go in there. But even the swine couldn't handle it. Because even the swine are children of the Lord. They're, the swine, though, jumped off of a cliff because they were so crazy. And they went into the abyss. Well, the thing of it is, is the swine represent the lower nature far beneath that of a human. These individuals who sinned so egregiously that they would rend that pearl, that wisdom, and had no desire for the truth or for the wisdom because they're nothing. That They're just swine. That's their nature. They need to grow. So they went back. Uh, they went out of the human, no longer going to be in the human. The human's going to be set free and the evil, dark spirits will go to the place that they belong, the lower nature. And they'll go into the abyss because that is where the cauldron churns the souls that are reincarnated in the resurrection to judgment. And they have a new life whereby they're able to atone for their error by suffering. And this is the discipline of the Lord because he loves them all. I'm going to go ahead and go. Hope you have a wonderful evening. May the Lord bless you guys. Spirit, soul, and body. And preserve you blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.